made another appointment that I would go back to the community home center, and I would meet a caseworker from Park Place Behavioral Hospital, another behavioral hospital. And her name was Iris Lugo. Do any of you know her? You know her? <laughs> oh, we know of course. Her. Yeah, of course you know her. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't know you. Um, <laughs> and she met me at the community home center, and I started to tell her my story. But she knew, I know your problem. I, I know your problem, I can help you, I want to help you. One of the first people that says, I can understand your problem and I know what to do. But the requirement is, you have to become a client of Park Place Behavioral Hospital. It just can't help you. You have to go through all the paperwork, you have to go through the procedures, and so on. That means another appointment. You notice how this goes. You meet somebody who then recommends you to another person, yep. then recommends you to another person, and recommends, and finally it was Derek. And I met her at the hospital. One of the things I had to do is I had to have an interview with a psychiatrist. Now, here's the thing. I don't know what the psychiatrist's report was. I don't know what, what the psychiatrist, Dr. Howard, told Iris. But whatever they told her, she, she wanted to proceed with, with the process. And the first thing was, of course, make another appointment, come back another day, and we'll start the paperwork, getting you social security benefits and a social security card. And then he said, we can find you a place to live. And here's the strangest thing. When she said that, my first reaction was, well, I don't need a place. I'm happy where I am. I'm happy with what I'm used to. I don't want to go some place where I got to get used to something else. Crazy reaction, but that's what it was. And uh, I think Social Security is a little involved, but she went through it. And this was in 2020, so we were right in the middle of a COVID shock. Everything had to be handled by phone, and it was a backup. And this was in early March. I would be able to get a interview with a social security agent in May. So that was two months I had to kill. So I had to get a social security card. Again, I wasn't interested in a place to stay. On March 13th, which is about two weeks after I met Iris, I went to see her and said, I need a place. All of once I decided I need a place. The first thing she had me do, believe it or not, was go to the hospital. This was the COVID time, I had to be checked out. And they checked me out. I did not have COVID, then I had high blood pressure, that I had been looked at, but I was okay. They sent me back to Park Place. I met uh, Iris in her office, and at another desk in her office, Derek was sitting there. And I had no idea what Iris told Derek. Mm -hmm. Iris had already called me, so I'm there already. Yeah. I don't know what you don't knew about me. You, right. did, you did not do any vetting. You did not interview me to check me out if I was a nice guy or whatever it was. You just saw me and I believe it was Antoine, very nice gentleman from P. And if you so, remember, yes. Mr. Arthur, my mom also came with me that day. Yes. Mom was never with me on assessments, but that day, you guys have heard mom talk about yes. this on YouTube. And Antoine was in the same position I was in. He was a lovely man. He had his little quirks, but he was a very sweet man. He cared about everybody in the house. And we went to the house. He loves Fufu. Yes. He was, <laughs> yes. He was a very good cook. I'll tell you straight up. That was March 13th. He actually left the house April 1st, which is a very quick turnaround. He had friends of the family who was going to move into it in San Bernardino, California. But he had to get to San Bernardino. Before he went to San Bernardino, he had to go to Fargo, North Dakota. I said, why do you have to go to Fargo, North Dakota? And he said, that's where I parked my truck. <laughs> he said, do you know in Kissimmee, where can you get a train that goes to Fargo, North Dakota? And believe it or not, in Kissimmee, you can get a train that'll get you to Fargo, North Dakota. You'll take it to Washington, you change, you get a train to Chicago, and that takes a train to Fargo. Eight? No, several. Oh, <laughs> And he was, he had another part was, he never slept in his bedroom. He always slept in the living room. For three weeks, we tried to talk him out of, uh, you have a bedroom, why don't you take it? Nope, I like the, like I said, he was a very, very sweet man, and I just hoped that the best happened to him. Well, I moved in, and I told Derek a couple of minutes ago. Just a second though, when Iris already had me in the office, yes. and when you walked in, what were your thoughts of what Iris had put together? Did you know that she had arranged for me to possibly house you at that point? No. Okay. I didn't know what you were doing. I didn't know who you were. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a guy sitting there talking on the telephone. You're talking on the telephone an awful lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, 
and it came a point today that Iris said to me and Etwan, we're going with this channel. No idea where we we're going. Uh, if I can interject for two seconds, because he doesn't know what Iris told me. That's right, I don't. When Iris called me, she said, Derek, you won't believe this one. Because <laughs> Iris calls me all the time for clients. Derek, this guy is elderly. Greatest guy I've ever ran into. But Derek, he's going back and forth to jail because he's homeless. But Derek, we're going to help him. He has no money, no SSI, and no SSDI. But Derek, we're going to pay for it until he gets on his feet. So a lot of times these social workers guys have these programs from their hospital where if the client doesn't have the money, they'll pay for it while they help Mr. Art get his SSI or SSDI or find a job. He was to try to find a job. Tell these folks what you used to do for a living. I was an engineer. Wow. So it can happen to anybody. I was just a, I back had a very Mr. good job. Oh, wow. I think it's, I think it's six, six years old. Like I said, it can happen. If it ever happened to me, it can happen to anybody. So we were, uh, we got in the truck, we got a truck. I had my truck at that point? Yes, you had yeah. the truck. The big truck. Yeah, the big truck. Yeah. 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 How'd you get in? Yeah. Well, Today I had rails to step you, up, but you I didn't. You, you, you had good steps on it. No, you might have had. That's that not a big problem. problem. Anyway, yeah, I, I got a truck. Yeah, yeah, he's like, I did a truck. Yeah, right. And we got to do some our way to who knows where. <laughs> and then while we were there, I asked where we were going. I said, well, this is a place that's one way in and one way out. I moved into the house. I was carrying, like most homeless people, or a lot of homeless people, I was carrying with me everything I owned. But I just had an F set. That was everything. I see people today that have, they, they, they have knapsacks, they have backpacks, they have other things. One guy I see all the time, he has a hand truck. It will get very proprietary. We gotta keep our stuff together. Yeah. I remember they gave you a bag of beans and that, cans that, that, with no can opener. That was another day. That was not okay. that day. It wasn't that day. day. Okay. okay. It's very sharp as y'all can see. Yeah. Very yeah. sharp with yeah. dates and times. Wait, well, I am now. Then I wasn't. I had a bad memory then. It's a group. We got to the house, and this is the house. What was it, Garrett? Yeah. Garrett yeah. Nicholas. Yeah. Garrett Nicholas. Very nice house, except it was two stories. <laughs> <laughs> right. And when I got there, there were eleven guys in the house, mm, yeah. all guys. And I told Derek, you know, back in those days, you weren't as good at this as you were as you are now. <laughs> <laughs> There were some really nice guys. Charlie, I don't know his name. Remember Charlie? Yep, I do. He was one of the nicest guys. Yep. Except, he was going the other way. Because of COVID, he was waiting to go to prison. Mm. I mean, the only time I saw a guy like that who was, you know, was due to go to prison and was waiting here for something until they would let him in. Huh. And he was a nice guy. And unfortunately, he was the nicest guy. Yeah. Well, he was kind and everything. He talked about it. He was planning that as soon as he got out of jail, he was going back to jail. Mm. In fact, when I was in jail, everybody I met was in jail for something. As soon as they, they got out, they were planning to go back to it. In fact, one guy was a financial scam artist. And he was in jail. He had all the papers worked out in his new scam. I mean, the only guy I met he was in jail for being in a very serious car accident. He didn't plan to go back on that. That was it. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you Second Chance Housing, an independent living facility that provides shared housing for military veterans and elderly adults. Our facility is designed to provide a safe and comfortable environment for those who have served our country and are in need of a second chance at life. We understand that transitioning to a new living situation can be difficult and overwhelming, which is why we offer a smooth transition. We offer shared living spaces as well as private rooms to ensure that our residents have the right balance of community and privacy. If you or you know someone that is in need of a second chance at life, please give us a call.